Act one, Hanforth via Zoom. The following extraordinary meeting of the Hanforth Parish Council Planning and Environment Committee was held on Thursday, 10th December, 2020. The meeting was held using Zoom video technology. Each speaker originally appeared on their own screen with only one participant visible at any one time. Jackie Weaver's camera was originally off until noted, so when she speaks, she is represented only by her name in white text on a black screen. Blackout. The first participant, Roger Small, appears. His back is turned before he rotates his spinny chair to face the camera like a Bond villain. The chairman is the first to speak. For some unknown reason, his zoo name is set to Hanforth PC Clark. When do we plan to start? Look off. I think we could start at any moment, Chairman. Um, I think it's perhaps helpful just to go through the same things as we went through before, which is just to encourage people to switch off their microphones. Thanks for that. Because it does reduce the background noise. And of course, we've got that bing, which tells us that somebody else wants to come in. So I'll continue to admit people if, if you'd like to start the meeting, Chairman. Can we be assured that we won't be thrown out of the meeting like we were last time? Um, I, as long as we have reasonable behaviour from everyone, no one will be excluded from the meeting. I, I was, I was thrown out of the meeting. Uh, Quite so rightly. So it's to Councillor Brewerton. As a point of order, Chairman, could we start the meeting? Yeah. Before John has a chance to speak further, Julie's uh, iPad appears in white text on the screen. But you cannot make out what she said. Chair, we haven't started the meeting yet. Do you want to speak on the way? Yes, I'd like to um to uh to ask points of order. I'm in. We're not in. We're not in a meeting, so points of order are not points of order apply during the debates and I want to ask Jackie, was it you who quoted a point of order? Yes, it was indeed. <laughs> Are you here as the proper officer? I am here offering support to Handforth Parish Council in the conduct of this meeting this evening. You're not the proper officer. Is that as a clerk or proper officer? There's no difference between clerk and proper officer. Um, of course there is. Yes, there is. You must know the basic law. Are we going to... I would have thought. Are we going to start this meeting, Chairman? It, it, it isn't. It isn't the role of somebody who, however kindly, volunteers to do the clerking for a meeting to act as a proper officer if they haven't been appointed... That's against the law. It's been called by... And let me also quote to you the standing of order hand. I... Will you stop talking? Unless we are prepared. Will you please listen? We'll go the same. Will you please listen? Will you stop being whatever it is you're trying to be and just clerk the meeting, if that's what you want to do? Chairman. Points, points of order according to our standard orders are determined by the chair. If you want to raise a point of order as a councillor, you ask if you can raise a point of order. You state it and then the chair decides it is not for the clerk to raise a point of order. Chairman. It is not for the clerk to decide at a point of order. You must be aware of that or at least God knows what you're doing in your job if you're not. Hello? Shall we start this meeting? It is. Or shall we elect an alternative chairman? Oh, are you? I'm, yeah. I'm just in a meeting at the moment. Can I give you a call back when it finishes? The govern. All right. OK, all right. Bye. Bye. So, Chairman, albeit late, shall we get this meeting started? For no reason, Barry Burkhill's camera appears. 
he is facing away from it. I can't see Jackie Weaver. An awkward pause. Who is this woman? Dear. Julie's iPad takes a dramatic breath, then sighs. Right, we'll start the we'll start the meeting, and I want to repeat what I said at the beginning of last meeting that this meeting has not been broke called according to the law. The law has been broken. No, this meeting has been properly called. Will you please let the chairman speak? Mrs. Weaver, please. If you continue to disrupt the meeting, I will have to remove you from it. You can't. Jackie Weaver glances to her right. Clicks a button. It's only the chairman who can remove people from a meeting. You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all! The chairman's screen disappears, replaced by Jackie Weaver's as she kicks him out. She's just kicked him out. I... I have. Uh, listen to me. Don't... Don't... No, no, don't. she's kicked him out. She's kicked him out. No, don't! This is a meeting called by two councillors. Illegally. Who may now elect a chairman. No, they can't because the vice chair's here. I take charge. Uh, in the... Read the standing orders. Read them and understand them! <gasps> Dear me. Appalling behaviour. Where's the chairman gone? A copy of this will... Can I... A copy of this will, in fact, be sent to the monitoring officer. A brief, unintelligible mishmash of words are heard from Jackie Weaver, Alid's iPad and Barry Burkhill. I'm the vice chair. Oh, out of these people... Where's the chairman? Elect. Read the standing orders. Where's the chairman gone? Read the standing orders. Who would like to elect a chairman for this meeting? You don't have to elect a chairman. There's a chairman already installed, the chairman of the council. Councillor Burkill, we've been through this. You you don't, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) The chairman, the chairman of the council is, is, is the chairman of the, the council. The camera returns briefly to Jackie before moving to Alid's iPad. Yeah, I'm going to subpoena everybody. Shh, shh, shh. C- come on. Um, Mr. Berghill, could I ask you to be to be respectful of Jackie Weaver, please? <laughs> Could we now elect a chairman, please? Here comes the subpoena. A deathly silence falls. Everyone waits to see who will speak first. Inevitably, it's Jackie. Chairman. I want to leave. You go out then. Just keep Barry out, so I'm leaving. Don't I want to stay? No, Barry has gone. This no, Barry's that side of it. I'm just about it. We're trying to have a teams meeting, you fool. We're trying to have a teams meeting, you fool. Yes, okay. You can't if you've got that. We hear Councillor Brewerton let out an angry sigh before the sounds of him <sighs> coming out of the room. His elderly assistant remains on screen, cackling <laughs> once again. Jackie Weaver, I find that uh, the person on Alad Brewerton's uh, Zoom is being very disrespectful to everybody. Ah, oh, oh, coming from you, from back in here. That's that sounds good. I uh, my my first point is to to apologise to Jackie, but welcome to Amforth. May I start? Indeed, it's nothing if not lively in Handforth. Yes, but what, what, what I would say is that it, uh, it was a, a very good example of bullying within Cheshire East and, uh, and the environs. 
John, can I make a very quick point? That's Rich coming from the chairman who held a meeting since March, who hasn't held a meeting since March, to try to try and call this one illegal. The man is a complete disgrace. Okay, thank you, Peter. All right. End of part one. Part two. Later, the same Zoom meeting. The members are now discussing a letter from the monitoring officer regarding an investigation into alleged bullying in Hanforth Parish Council. So we'll swap the orders and the next one will be to discuss the correspondence received from Cheshire's monitoring officer. Now, a letter was received via email uh, on the 25th of November to all the parish councillors. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single line. I'm just going to pick out a couple of individual items that might uh, be useful for members of the public. What I will be requesting is that this letter is appended to the minutes and is displayed on the council website, on the Facebook page and on the notice boards, OK? Could, could, could we have a brief synopsis of, of the more... Um... Yes. The more important points in the letter. Certainly, that's what I'm hoping to do. Uh, and it's from uh, David Brown, who's the new Director of Governance and Compliance and, and, and Monitoring Officer. Uh, <clears throat> his first paragraph. I am writing to you following a number of referrals and complaints received in respect to Hanforth Parish Council. I will divide this letter into three parts to separate the issues and prevent any conflating behavioural and conduct issues with a, any substantive election point. Uh, part one, he tells us about the returning officer and the returning officer's duties. He says the returning officer has received multiple correspondence that appears to suggest the returning officer should not comply with the statutory and regulatory regime of the calling of an election. Uh, the returning officer's role does not include any element of referee, policeman, judge, adjudicator or advisor. The returning officer has received a declaration of vacant office from Hanforth Parish Council, and this has triggered a mandatory election process. This uh, declaration of the vacant office was sent by the clerk because one of the councillors from the West Ward did not attend a meeting for six months. The last meeting was attended in November last year, so missed December, uh, January, uh, February and March, which was the last full HPC meeting. The fact that there were no meetings held is irrelevant. It is a period, not a number of meetings that were held, and this is the essential item, but that is why Ashley... Beat. John realises his mistake. All that hard work to keep people anonymous has gone to waste. Uh, well, I've said his name there. Um, uh, that is why the clerk sent... Uh, notification to the monitoring off to, to the, uh, uh, the democratic services the, the, the returning officer of, of democratic uh, services that there, there was a vacancy in Handforth. now at the time this was disputed by certain members of the parish council uh, part two i know I've, 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 I've gone through part one quite quickly there so i will go through part two in the same way as Monitor Officer in Cheshire East, I received a multiplicity of complaints and referrals. These range from multiple complaints about councillors' behaviour to the fundamental issues of governance and member officer engagement. The most recent referrals relate to suggestions that some members of HPC have purported per per to take decisions that are plainly unlawful, and these decisions have resulted in expenditure of public funds. If the code of conduct matters raised are taken at face value, they are sufficiently serious to warrant detailed consideration. The detailed consideration may result in a hearing before the Cheshire East Council Committee for Standards. The outcome of any such hearing may be public and may be used as evidence in related legal proceedings. The costs associated with the investigation of any misconduct are published and will become a matter for the Parish Council to defend. <clears throat> Part three. You should be aware that any member who knowingly acts unlawfully places themselves at risk of personal liability or damages to third parties and the recovery of any public money reported to the expended by them on behalf of the parish council. The elements of the offence are summarised in the Attorney General's reference and expanded upon in the Crown Prosecution website. It is probable that any councillor acting on reported belief that there is no vacancy may be engaging in misconduct and acting willfully or being recklessly indifferent to the fact 
I would point out that Jackie, as a uh, director of CHALC, has been extremely helpful, uh, not just uh, to the uh, the three councillors currently in the room, but uh, other members who needed help and assistance in validating what he'd actually done. He has been uh, found to be clean as a whistle, totally legal, and perfectly in order with what he has done. Some members of this council uh, disagree with that. And my personal opinion is that it's for uh, political gain. <clears throat> But I might be wrong. That's, uh, I did read it out completely. As I said, it will be issued and uh, it will be available for yourselves if you'd like uh, to email me. I'd, I'd uh, certainly send a copy back. Uh, Roger. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, I think this is a very important letter and uh, it's the job of the council to respond to it. I see no reason why this letter should, should not be made widely available to Hanforth residents. Uh, however, it seems to me that there's a, an, an investigation by Cheshire East Council on underway. Correct. Yeah, I would therefore advise that any uh, letter of response to Cheshire East should not be in any way linked to any named councillor nor to the post of the parish clerk. Roger, I just need to put in, Roger, um, we don't believe any response is necessary. That's my view. Just uh, check with uh, Cynthia and Sue. Uh, I don't believe that our part in the parish council needs to respond to this. This, um, uh, yeah. this, this is a very, uh, how can I put it, uh, unheard of, unprecedented piece of action by a monitoring officer. Roger and is reading from a piece of paper off camera. He's <laughs> definitely prepared this in advance. Uh, I think I from the point view of, of local residents it's it's important to think to, to thank the monitoring officer for clarifying the situation with regards to this casual vacancy it should give an assurance that councillors will follow his recommendations with respect to accepting the existence of this casual vacancy it, it should also welcome not only the early publication of the outcome of the investigation but also the monitoring officers continued scrutiny of the actions of the parish council. Yes, I understand your point, Roger. He does mention that uh, um, it should be made public, uh, any findings, and, and I would advise that there is an investigation currently taking place, and it has been for some time. Uh, I'm hopeful that it will be resolved sooner rather than later uh, at that time. May uh, I... That time, well, that's when I believe we should be offering thanks to the monitoring officer for what we hope will be a complete uh, resolution of the issue. Mm, yeah. A well-earned pause. May I just interject there, Chair, please? Certainly, yes. In response to uh, Roger's comments, um, I think it would be difficult for HPC at this current time to respond to this letter because... As you can see, we have some difficulties. We could only, we could only respond as the three councillors who are here. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we have <clears throat> been in touch with the monitoring officer. So I think at this moment in time, we just have to put that to one side until such time as the investigation is concluded. And then it will all hopefully be made public. Chair. Cynthia. Can I speak please? Yes. Um, I understand where uh, Roger Small is coming from, but once he sees sight of this letter, there's nothing to stop him writing to the monitoring officer as any other residents, because I know a handful of residents have been not kept in the dark, but we haven't been able to inform people because of the confidentiality. But now the monitoring officer has said we can share his letter, then that's up to the local resident how he responds to it. What I would point out is that we are loath to make any comment, as Cynthia says, of a confidential nature, of an investigatory nature, because we don't want to compromise the current investigation. Correct. Chair? The letter was received, I know, from my point of view, gratefully, but because it did say that, yes, we are, we understand, that's as far as we see it there, Sue. Um, a member of the public wishes to speak. Sorry? Peter wishes to speak. Oh, uh, by all means, yes. 
Uh, I thought Rogers was very measured and appropriate response. Actually, I think he's quite right that you should respond individually. I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll stop there. I think it's a very measured response, and I think it would be appropriate for you to reply individually. I take your point that we can't, you can't reply as the council. Correct. Well, I, I, I think to show that you agree with him, you should uh, value his letter. Uh, and yes, you will be a dear to the points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 but councillors, uh, could could I speak, councillors? Can I speak? Uh, sure, yes, yes. But we have adhered to the rules and regulations. None of us have thwarted the rules or put people in a position that in some areas have become untenable. Well, tell him. that That's the point, isn't it? Tell him that. Yes. Yeah, I, I would point out that the level of detail in our concerns that has gone into the monitoring officer's office is uh, far in excess as you might expect. Currently, I'm quite happy just to wait, have some patience, and hopefully the investigation that I know is taking place, and it is quite a high level investigation, which is uh, it's all I'll say, and, and hopefully that will be resolved sooner rather than later. Could, could, could we have Jackie's views on, on the matter? Is that all right, Chairman? Uh, as long as you're happy making them known, yeah. I think, um, picking up on what the chairman has already said, so much of this has been confidential um, that it kind of often looks as though there is inactivity. But I am confident that the monitoring officer is perfectly aware that the councillors that we have here this evening have done our utmost to comply with all regulatory requirements and have in effect badgered the monitoring officer to take an interest. Also, reiterating from the chairman's words, a letter like this from the monitoring officer is unprecedented. I, I... Thank you, Jackie. I would, I've, I've never seen such a strongly worded letter from a monitoring officer to a local council. 25 years, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, you've not been to Handforth often enough. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm just... Sorry, Jackie, say that again, say that again. <laughs> I'm just glad it's a Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. I would, um, <laughs> as Jackie said, the monitoring officer is aware of what's been happening here, very much so. Let's not try to over-egg it by having lots of people protesting letters to this monitoring officer. What are you doing about this? Uh, I've heard that this is to do with idiots who are doing this. I don't think that would be helpful. Perhaps, if you could, by all means, share the information. But let's not encourage people to badger the monitoring officer, because what we don't want is to have a negative effect on any investigation. And we don't want the investigation to be compromised, Chair. No, we don't. Exactly, yeah. Which is why we have to be careful, isn't it? Which is why we've been walking on eggshells since uh, 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 July, June, June. I'd say glass. I wouldn't say eggshells. My feet have been cut to ribbons. That's because you're a scatter. <laughs> sure, go. <laughs> End of part two. Part three. The meeting continues. Ian has a question. Okay, Ian. Ian, you're muted. Ian, you're muted. Uh, thank you. Just um, I noted before the chairman um, departed from the meeting, uh, his, his label on his video said Clerk of Anforth Parish Council. Um, could anyone please clarify how that came about and, and whether that is in fact the case right now? Thank you, Ian. 
I must admit, I didn't notice that, but... Um, I have a uh, photograph of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can only assume it was... Um, did you say it was a badge or was it actually tagged on his laptop? It's um, uh, where you... Like you see uh, Ian Ball on, on my video, uh, his said... Um, yeah. His said, Clark, Irish Pounce um, and Fourth Parish Council on his. Yes. I've no idea how that's happened. And as far as I'm concerned, the other councillors here this evening, he is not the clerk of the parish council, whether or not he declares himself to be or not, or makes himself a badge that says, I'm the clerk of the parish council. My understanding is he cannot do it. No. Um, he is not. I also have an email from him saying that he has taken over as clerk of Anforth Parish Council. I'd like to uh, perhaps ask uh, Jackie if, uh, could you give us a chalk view on this? Yes, um, certainly, Chairman. Um, uh, yes, most definitely, I, I did, thank you. I did notice the um, moniker on the screen and um, it did make it quite difficult putting names to whoever, um, uh, but um, having followed this quite closely, the, um, the Chairman simply declared himself um, Clark and, and notified everybody of the case and the, um, the remaining members um, quite correctly have refused to recognise the position. Um, but as Councillor Smith says, I'm afraid there is no way of <laughs> stopping him calling himself Clark. She takes a beat. A joke forms in her head. Please refer to me as Britney Spears from now on. <laughs> Everyone chuckles. <laughs> Laid it. <laughs> we did, um, as you know, put the disruptive members into um, the waiting room. Are we minded to allow them to try to um, return to the meeting? I'm afraid that I would loathe for that to happen because we've only got work to get through and I can only see everything being... Um, um, Even more disrupted. I was surprised at um, the reaction of some of the people in the way that certainly the, the Brewerton household that... Um, May I interject there, Chair? Yeah, yes, certainly. Oh, um... Uh, would it be would it be acceptable to send a message to them to say that if they've prepared to come back and uh, behave in the proper manner, then we would happily have them back at the meeting? No, until we. I'm against that, Sue, because they've already disrupted the planning. They've okay. already disrupted the community, and some of us. Uh, okay, <clears throat> Cynthia. Why? Why some of us felt really aggrieved at what was the fact that some of the Brewerton household sat there laughing like hyenas. Well, the actual... Uh, bear with me a second. John I, leans over his laptop to reach some papers, leaving us with a view of his shirt and grey cardigan. I'm just looking for the papers, which... Um, I'll ask for you to be put in. Please could Alan Murdoch be brought uh, back into the meeting? Who's Alan Murdoch, please? Yes, please. He's a member of the public. No, who is Alan Murdoch? Oh, member of the public. He's a member of the public. I've got Alan's eye. Public. Yeah. Alan's eye. I... Yeah, got... yeah, that's him. That's him. Alan's iPad. Yes. Certainly. Just excuse me for a second. Gets up and leaves our view. Thank you. Beat. The view switches to Sue while she rustles some papers. <laughs> please, please give my apologies to his iPad. <laughs> oh, me, I didn't know I realised I was disruptive. I was being muted. How can I be disruptive when I'm muted? <laughs> You're always disruptive. If I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> End of part three. Part four. Still the same meeting. Roger Small, semicolon, has the floor. The Neighbourhood Plan Steering Group has never formally been disbanded, as far as I'm concerned. I think it would be very easy to uh, alter the Constitution, no problem at all. 
Okay. And uh, Alan? Oh, uh, yes. Could I speak? Oh, sorry. I, uh, I didn't get a chance to make any uh, comments on this because I was in um, on the naughty step when we first... <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> when we uh, when we first had uh, public comments, was there any room on it? <laughs> Not now, no. Would you like to pro propose something, Sue? Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's propose that we set up a subcommittee for that very thing. A subcommittee of the steering group. Uh, a subcommittee of the uh, uh, yeah yeah. Um, well, it would have to be a subcommittee of the, the planning and environment. No, no, I don't agree with that. Does it not work like that? No. Yes, it is important. I, I, I'd just like to check with Jackie. Is that uh, ideal? It, it really makes no difference. The Okay. If sentence won't... Fine. End of part four. Part five. We are somehow still in the meeting. The team would like to publish the earlier discussed letter on the Parish Council website, but there's a problem. Hmm. Uh, that would be hard to do because we haven't got access to it. We're blocked. You've got... We're blocked against what? On the Hanford Parish website. We can't get on. Well, we can make a request. We can. Well... W w well, but more people will be seeing it once it's on the Facebook page. Indeed. So, so we won't mention the Parish Council website for now. We won't bother putting it on the website, Jackie. So if you can delete that, we won't put it on the website for now. I think, Chairman, the, the main thing is just to say that you will make it as widely available as possible. Yeah, that, that's... Yeah, agreed. Thank you. And, and um, Council, Councillor Smith, if anybody wants a separate copy that's in attendance tonight, can we send them one? Yes, we've asked permission and uh, we, we've been allowed to uh, share this information. OK, thank you. Good. OK, uh, let's have a look at Ian. Did you have a question? You're muted, Ian. You're, mute, you're muted. Now you've got him. There you go. Good. There's a severe lag on the system. Just um, on that issue of this uh, this uh, letter now being made public, um, um, what happens when Wilmslow Co UK gets hold of it? I can't answer that. I breathe a big sigh of relief. Okay. But, but um, I, I, I would prefer that not to happen yet. Yeah, well, it will be out of our control as soon as it goes on Facebook, of course. End of part five. Part six. When will it end? I think um, if this goes viral on the um, uh, internet, or Facebook, whatever. Um, it's going to start a war of words. I agree uh, that we don't want to uh, prejudice anything. We, we, we don't want a turf war breaking out. Um, it's not going to be finished this side of Christmas. <sighs> <laughs> I'm trying to choose my words. Uh, you know me, I'm, I'm not often lost for words. Can we make uh, uh, this recording available of the, the Zoom meeting? I don't see why not, Chairman. That's if you want to hear my dulcet tones and get bored. <laughs> then it's there and available or, or will be. Be interesting for other parties on the council to hear it. Oh, what are we done now? The date of the next meeting. The second Tuesday in January. I don't know when the date is. But, uh, uh, I haven't got my diary in front of me, sorry. I think it's the 11th. Ah, yeah. Uh, 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 and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the thank you again. Thank you very much. John reaches out of view to turn off his webcam. End. 
if all the cast would please turn their cameras on for a little bow and roll call. <laughs> so, uh, in alphabetical order, we had as David Pinkham, Adam J. Uh, as John Smith, part one, we had Barry O'Reilly. As Julie's iPad and John Smith, parts three to six, we had Dan Ellis. As Alad's iPad, Councillor Brewerton and Alan's iPad, we had Dan Hazelwood. Uh, as Sue, parts three to six, we had David Ritchie. A fourth unseen voice uh, we had uh, as uh, Gregory George. That was who it was. Yes. Uh, as Cynthia, parts three to six, we had Ethan Kelly. Cynthia, parts one to two, was Georgie Beerman. A third unseen voice was also Gregory George. Barry Burkhill was played by Jacob Bush. A different unseen voice and unseen voice were both played by James Darcy. John Smith, part two, was played by Jonathan Oldfield. Jackie Weaver, parts one to two, was played by Kate Marley. Sue, parts one to two, was played by Larissa Hunter. The chairman was Lorna Rose Treen. Peter Moore was Matthew Wilson. Councillor Brewerton's elderly assistant was Rebecca Bell. Roger Small was Rob Madge. And Jackie Weaver, parts three to six, was Will Stewart. Stepping in for Ian Ball was Stacey Ghent after I forgot to cast it. My name is Joseph Martin. I did the stage directions. Thank you for joining us.